Today we're going to talk about painting door hangers in layers. This is something that a lot of people struggle with when they're first starting out painting door hangers because they don't have a lot of experience with paints and what paints cover other paints well. Um, like for example, yellow tends to be kind of a transparent color and so a lot of people don't know that sometimes you have to layer that on top of white or mix white with it to get good coverage. And then sometimes they'll start with a tiny area instead of a larger area that can make it feel very frustrating and make it feel like you're not making much progress throughout your painting. And if you don't plan out the steps in which you're going to paint your door hanger, then at some point you're going to hit a roadblock and you're going to be really frustrated because you realize that something is a little difficult because you should have done that first instead of second or third and so on. So let's break it down for you and I'm going to teach you exactly how to plan out the steps of painting your door hanger so that you get through the entire project with ease and you enjoy the painting process. Okay first we're going to take a look at the largest area in the background. I want to use our birthday hat door hanger design for this first example. The largest area on this is this teal area at the bottom and the white area in the center of the hat. We could go ahead and trace our polka dots on and paint the white around each of those polka dots. But knowing what colors we want to use on our polka dots helps us decide if painting the whole area there white would save us a little bit of time. It's going to slow you down considerably if you have to trace around each one of these dots. So what I did when I painted this design was painted the entire center part of the hat white. I painted the bottom part of the hat teal and then I went ahead and painted that top part pink. And then I planned out my polka dots and I just did the polka dots on top of the white. This not only saved me a lot of time from having to paint around polka dots, but it also helped keep these colors nice and bright and vibrant because by putting white underneath them, even if the color is a little bit transparent like that yellow tends to be, it's going to make it where those colors just really shine because they have a nice opaque white background. And then I continued by finishing it off with the fine details. We did splatter paint across the entire thing and some lettering and it turned out so cute. This is a design that you can find in our shop in template or wood blank form if you want to paint this one. And there's a free tutorial right here on YouTube for it as well. Okay, let's take our cute glasses bunny design for another example. This is another project we have right here on YouTube. This one has 3D pieces. The glasses and the little carrot tops are 3D. And I'm planning out how I'm going to paint this design. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, the largest area is the purple background and that bunny. So does it make sense to paint the entire thing purple? No, of course not, because our bunny is going to be a nice, light, creamy color. And I worried that that color might not cover the purple well enough, and our bunny might have a little bit of a lilac color to him. So what we did was we painted the background purple. And before we even painted our bunny, we took those polka dots into consideration because I already knew that I wanted to do dots. And from lots of painting experience, I know that if I had gone ahead and painted the bunny body before doing my dots, because I'm using a sponge pouncer to do the dots, I would have struggled not getting paint on the body of the bunny while doing those polka dots that are kind of layered behind the bunny. So I started by doing the polka dots first, and then once I had all of those placed, I was able to paint the body of the bunny on top of the polka dots, and it didn't matter that some of the polka dots had gotten onto his body because we were painting over them. And I knew that the color that I was gonna be painting that bunny would cover those dots well. See what I'm saying? The next thing I had to consider was the stripes on my little carrots. I could have taken the time to paint two totally different colors of stripes and paint them one by one, but I knew that it would save me a lot of time if I painted the entire carrot a light orange color. So I chose one color of orange. I believe it was jack-o'-lantern orange. And jack-o'-lantern orange is very vibrant, but it's also a little transparent. I mixed it with some white to create the background color of these carrots. And then after that was dry, I laid some painter's tape down and I painted stripes with just the jack-o'-lantern orange with no white. So this is actually the same color with a little white and no white at all to create just a subtle stripe on the carrots. At that point, we had most of the background of this design painted and it was time to begin some finishing details. So I painted the little carrot tops, the glasses, I added the bunny's face, and some of those finishing details like that cute little dotted line that goes around the outside of the design. And then I glued on my 3D pieces. It all came together in the end and I'm so proud of how it turned out. But if I hadn't planned this out step by step, it could have been a very frustrating project. So thinking about it step by step, knowing what patterns you want to use and how you want to use them, and planning out your color usage in a smart way saves you a lot of time. Okay, so what if your background is going to be really dark? I'm talking like black or navy or some color that is going to be very difficult to cover up with vibrant, brighter colors. 
Let's take our Brushstroke Bunny door hanger for example. We painted this one inside our private membership, the Painters Clubhouse, this past spring. And this was the first time that we had ever painted anything that had a solid black background. Well, maybe not solid. It did have a little bit of a chalkboard sort of finish look to it. But if you notice, all the colors on this are very light and very pastel and very springtime-ish. And that would have been um, very difficult to cover black doing this project. So when we began this project, we were thinking, should I paint around the bunny? Should I paint around every single flower to avoid having to paint over black? And then we realized that's going to be really like time consuming and difficult and very tedious. So I made the decision to paint the entire thing black and then we took white paint and we just color blocked in the areas that were going to be lighter. So we color blocked in the bunny's body, the main parts of the flower. We pretty much drew out everything in white on top of the black. And then once that was dry, we went in with the color and we started adding the color on top of the white. So by adding the white, it canceled out all of the black that we'd covered the design up with. And this was really relatively simple because we were doing it on a laser etched wood blank. So let's talk about how to do this if you're doing it at home, right? So if you're doing it at home and you don't have a laser etched blank, maybe you're using a template and a piece of graphite paper. Painting on a dark color, you're going to want to use a light color of graphite paper like white. They make a white graphite paper that you could lay down on a dark color. That would make it easy for you to still see your design after you've painted the entire background black. For us, we were painting on top of a laser etched wood blank. And as you know, you can still see those lasered lines through the paint, even if you paint over them. So even though we painted the entire thing black, we could still see the details in the lines of the bunny and the flowers and all of that. So we color blocked them in with white. We started adding our colors and the entire thing came together beautifully. So the next time you sit down to paint a door hanger, before you start adding paint to your project, think, what colors do I want to use? Which colors are gonna be difficult to cover? If I put black all over this, am I gonna be able to cover it well? Probably not. If I'm using yellow, do I need to use it on top of white or something like that? Or do I need to mix it with white to get better coverage? Am I doing patterns like polka dots and stripes? Or am I doing splatter paint? Is the splatter paint on top of everything? Like it is in our birthday hat design? Or is it underneath some layers? Because sometimes we do splatter paint in the background. All of these things need to be taken into consideration before you start painting. That way you know what you're gonna do first, second, third, and last. And then hopefully you don't hit any bumps along the way. But even if you do, keep those baby wipes handy. A lot of times they can clean up a mess. And at the end of the day, it's just paint. You can always paint over it and try again. So don't let yourself get frustrated. Take these things and plan them out and you'll have a much better painting experience. If you enjoyed this video today and you wanna learn more about door hanger painting, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like this video to help us out. And don't forget to visit the freebies section of our website. We have a free mini course that will walk you through all that we've talked about today, step by step, layer by layer, so that you will have a joyful painting experience. You can find all that and more at southernadornmentsdecor.com.